Welcome back to the Nikki Clark Show. The show is about transforming lives one story at a time. And always, always so thrilled to invite people from all walks of life to share their heart stories, their stories of transformation and uh, empowerment. And we have yet another amazing individual with us today. She is a finance coach of the Friendly Finance Coach and Personal Insurance and Investment Agent of WFG. And she is launching an incredible event uh, for business owners December 5th. And I would love to introduce Jennifer Woodbeck. Jennifer, how are you doing tonight? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing really, really great. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Uh, tonight to share a little bit about uh, yourself and the event that's coming up. So uh, let's get to it. Let's find out about your background leading up to what you're doing today. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. So what can we know about uh, who you are and, and how you were inspired, one, to become a finance coach? For sure. Great question. So, you know what, it, it's an interesting time, I find, in the last year, especially with COVID. Um, mm-hmm. But my background was actually originally in healthcare. So I worked for 17 years, specifically more in chronic lung diseases, which, you know, is, COVID is now near and dear to my heart because I, I worked through SARS and I worked through MERS and I worked through all those other, you know, life changes that happened. But I just realized within all of that that people really – when they were diagnosed with an illness of any kind, it wasn't just the illness that affected families. It was actually the financial situation, having to take time work off work, having to lose an income or possibly never being able to return to work. And, you know, it, that background of healthcare helped me appreciate so much more in the future as to what structures people needed to do differently. So, you know, for me specifically, I just knew I had a bigger mission than, you know, just working in healthcare and thought, wow, people, we weren't, we just weren't taught these things. We weren't taught how to plan for a rainy day properly. And so I took on this whole bigger mission of coaching and financially structuring people to plan for those rainy days, whether it's a loss of job or an Mm -hmm. illness or a loss of a life. And, you know, just making sure people understand all of their options differently and also understanding what their gut feelings are around money. So, yeah, my healthcare background kind of took me to a whole different realm of finance and financial understanding. Absolutely. And, and, you know, Jennifer, I think this year taught us so well about how to prepare for the unexpected, you know, and and really to um, understand the value of, of financial management. So, what are, what are some of the keys to, um, you know, planning for a rating day, planning for, you know, what, what we're going through these unprecedented times? How can we plan a little bit better? Absolutely. Well, one of the things I've noticed that people don't do regularly is we don't actually track our spending. I'm a big advocate mm-hmm. for tracking and knowing, you know, where your money went each day. You know, we kind of have an idea of how much money we expect to make, especially if you get paid every two weeks or once a month. You know how much is coming in, but we really don't know how much is going out. And it's so easy to just tap a card. And, you know, we do that, especially with COVID now where they're trying to limit cash, exchanging hands. We really just tap everything. And nobody really understands until you realize your credit card, you know, has either maxed out or gotten to a certain amount where you can't pay it, pay it off all the time or, you know, you look at your bank account and say, oh, why, why do I only have $100 in there? Where did all that money go that I thought I had? And, you know, by tracking every day of what we're spending, you just have a better idea of where your money is at. And so I really, really, when I work with people individually or as a group, we, we talk about that, you know, talk about spending a certain amount instead of just constantly spending money and not knowing where it's going. Okay, and, and how do we track? What, how would you advise us to do that? Is there a particular method of tracking? Yeah, what I do with people, I actually recommend that you, at the, at the end of each day, so you've spent everything you're going to spend for the day, either keep a journal or a piece of paper. I use tracking sheets that uh, break everything down that I have on my website too, but we just 
at the end of the day, take two seconds, and you don't have to be exact, but if you know you had three coffees that day and you drove through you know, your local coffee shop, well, if it's a $5 coffee each day that you, or each coffee you bought, you know you spent $15. So you write down $15. If you grabbed lunch and it was a $20 lunch or you, know, you went somewhere fancier and it was a $40 lunch, just write that down. And you don't have to calculate it at the end of the day because that can sometimes you know, be a little unnerving, but just writing everything down that you think you spent. If you went for groceries and it was a $200 grocery bill, you write down the $200. And if at the end of each day, you just write down those numbers and then, you know, I would say Sunday, Sunday's supposed to be a relaxing day. Pick that afternoon Sunday to just tally up those, that amount. And that gives you just an idea of how much you actually spent. Um, and then see if you need to adjust for the following week or see if there's unexpected things that came up. We went to the dentist today, so that was an unexpected expense. But, you know, I know that that fits within our budget. And then look at that where when we have to pay that off, where does that happen? How, does that, how do we evaluate that and make some shifts and changes for the following week? And I find you know, daily tracking and weekly tracking is much better than just leaving it to the end of the month because it gives you a better realistic picture of your day by day. Excellent. That's really good, really good advice. But what other um, things do people come to you about? What, what other uh, things do they look for when they ask for your coaching? So there's been a lot going on. Unfortunately, with, you know, COVID, a lot of people have lost jobs or haven't been able to return to work. Maybe it's not a full loss of a job. But, you know, trying to figure out how to make ends meet right now. So a lot of what I do with people is a little bit of that mindset of, you know, not just feeling the doom and gloom, but finding some hope. Are there ways we can cut back? Are there ways we can make changes? Are there things, lots of people I sit with and look at that, you know what, we can cut out a couple things. Can we, you know, decrease the internet speed in the house for a little bit? Can we turn off one of those cell phones for a little while if we don't need them? Can we uh, reduce the amount of gas we're driving because we're not driving to and from an office every day? And just making some slight adjustments for what's going on just helps people have some reassurance that they're on the right track. The other thing, of course, with people that I, I do a lot with, you know, people that are looking at buying a house or looking at making some changes, we, you know, plan. So I always like to say I help people with their dreams and goals as much as I help people get out of struggling situations. But with everybody I meet, I look at dreams and goals. What does the next one year, five years retirement look like? And then we start planning. So I do what's called a financial independence number. So it helps you kind of understand what you want to do at retirement and then reverse engineer it to start saving that money today. So we do the same thing if it's retirement or if it's buying a house. Or if it's, you know, want to take five trips a year, you know, how do we plan that ahead of time so we're not relying on credit? Absolutely. So would you recommend that people uh, use more of a cash diet than credit or a combination? I would, yeah, I usually suggest to people, you know, in the, when we do, do start off together, don't change anything. You want a realistic picture of what your habits are. So if you're always using credit to get started, then, you know, let's just keep with your credit for two weeks, but track it. And then my preference is if you know you typically spend $200 a week, can you take out $175 of cash out of the bank instead? And just try and cut back a little bit there if you need to save more money. By using cash, people have realized, you know, there's a little bit more of, I'll say, a gut reaction or an emotional reaction when you're handing over your last $5 bill from your wallet or looking in your wallet and knowing that, you know, I only have $20 left and I need to get gas tomorrow. You know, you don't necessarily go buy that extra lunch or go buy that extra coffee because you make some pivot changes knowing the fact that your cash is limited for what you have. So, you know, there's an emotional tie differently to cash than there is to tapping with a credit card. So definitely, if we can use cash more, it definitely helps people be more realistic about what their, their spending habits and saving habits are. Fantastic. Now, Jennifer, I'm, I'm really excited to uh, talk about the event that you have coming up uh, Saturday, December 5th, between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., Build Your Business During COVID-19 Second Wave, uh, to learn strategies to grow your business in the current climate. Can you talk about the inspiration to start this event and uh, what can people anticipate for that day? Absolutely. Well, you see, this event came out of the fact that I had to pivot and change this last year. So we, my husband and I, his job transferred us to a whole other city from where we were living. We had to move kids with us and everything, of course. And so, you know, I was 
essentially, I'll say a, a, big, a big fish in a little sea in the city we were living in, and I moved to be a little fish in a very, very big sea. So I had to kind of outreach to people and say, how do I do things differently? How do I make myself known? How do I, you know, make a name for myself in this big mil- millions of people in this no- new city we're in? And so I was introduced to many different professions and many different people from social media experts to communication experts to um, pod people that do podcasts and how to write a book and how to use communication styles differently, how to figure out how to get referrals that you want rather than people just giving you their, you know, everybody that they know in their book or people giving you nobody as a referral. And so I decided that, you know what, I've used all these great resources and especially with COVID when people are used to networking and used to being out and used to just kind of doing their thing, they probably need these resources too. So I had this idea of bringing all these amazing people together in one place so that others don't have to work as hard to find these amazing people, that they're just there, available, and you get to learn from all of them in one day. Fantastic. So tell us, who do you have lined up as speakers? Well, I have you, Nikki, speaking, which is going to be amazing. (laughs) I'm excited about about that. (laughs) Um, I'm really excited. Some of the other speakers I have, um, I have James McNeil. Um, a lot of people know him as the love guru. So James McNeil is actually a um, best-selling author, speaker, coach, kind of consultant guy, but he specializes a lot on communication. So he has a program that's called the Verbal Aikido, which is pretty awesome. I've taken that a couple times, and it's all about the art of communication, which is a really interesting concept and you know something we use in everyday language, but how to respond differently with people. Um, There's also Robert Moore. So he's the magnetic entrepreneur. So I've been working with him directly, doing a lot of – he's a business coach and a speaker. So he publishes books. He's published my recent book. So he helps people kind of break through some of their nervous energies and, and how to get around and be able to speak more and be a speak from stages, which essentially we're not doing on stage anymore, but we're um, now speaking, of course, on Zoom or on other platforms instead. Um, also, Daniel, he's Danny Z. If you know who Danny Z is, he's a, a hypnotist and a mag- magician. It's a hard word for me to say, but he also travels typically around the world, and he's had to pivot his business because he can't travel anymore too. So. Um, it's pretty awesome to have him be able to speak to us about what he's had to do. And then there's a few more. So RJ Johnson, he's a marketing director with World Financial Group, a coach and a builder, and he specializes in how to get the referral that you actually want. So when I started um, in Mississauga where I live now, it was, you know, how do you, how do you ask people for referrals and then get them properly, get the people you want to talk to and get them in front of you. So I'm excited to have him speak. A uh, couple more people is at Lisa Berry. So she's an inspirational person who is going to speak about, you know, taking your business from your head to your heart and how to push through that. Um, Della, actually, Della has a TV, or sorry, I should say a uh, um, talk show host, and Della's Voice. And Della um, is actually co-hosting with me because we're using her platform and the Magnetic Entrepreneur platform to bring this to everybody. But she'll be talking a little bit about about podcasts and how to utilize that system too. And then um, two more speakers we have, Morali. So Morali also does branding. So one thing I didn't realize was that I should have branded back in the early days of my business. And I have now as a friendly finance coach, which has brought me to a whole other realm rather than just being a finance coach. It's I'm the friendly finance coach, so that has a different ring to it. And then the last speaker that I'll mention is that we have Jack Vincent. So he's somebody who has also just recently written a book. He also helps people kind of learn the language in a different way and how to not get referrals you want necessarily, but how to actually train people in a way to get get, um, buy-in and get inspiration from them. So he's another one that does a lot on communication. So got some great communication experts, some great social media, some podcasts, some authors, some language experts more so in different realms, and you know, just bringing this all into one place for everybody. Fantastic. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And where can people go and purchase the tickets? 
Great question. There's a few places. Um, I do have it on my LinkedIn. So I can be found uh, on LinkedIn as Jennifer Woodbeck Thompson is my name on LinkedIn. It's also available on Facebook. If you just type in Build Your Business During COVID-19 Second Wave, it'll come up there. And they're all links that direct you back to um, Eventbrite, of course. So there are a few different options. If you type that in, you will find it everywhere, which is a, an awesome opportunity. Well, I, I think this is uh, something so timely. Uh, people really need the encouragement during this time, and there are a lot of a lot of uh, businesses that are, you know, like you said, the the pivot, um, and then some businesses have decided to just you know, stay silent uh, until <laughs> the wave moves. Um, and, and I really believe that we just need to keep, keep it going uh, in, in whatever capacity we can with our business. Uh, and and it, it, the biggest lesson I've learned, I think, this year uh, through this all is that it's just amazing to see people working together. Uh, I really feel a sense of community and connection. And, and people really um, needing each other more than ever. And uh, this is another example of, of an event that's really bringing a community of people together to uh, sharpen each other in terms of their ideas, uh, what they bring to the table, and, and how they can you know, um, collaboratively uh, help other people. So uh, thank you so much for uh, creating this platform. And uh, I'm... I'm Really can't wait to be part of it. Thank you. I appreciate you saying yes to me when I reached out to you. So I, I, you bring so much value to your audience, and I'm sure you'll bring, you know, of course, tons of value to our event on Saturday too. Well, I'm, I'm excited to talk about you know, how to boost your business with social media, uh, and this is, you know, experience that I've, uh, I have under my belt. Um, from the 12 years now that I've been uh, an entrepreneur and, and you know, learning the, the highs and lows and, and uh, just working with other people and, and understanding the, the science behind using um, social media platforms uh, to uh, create a buzz. Uh, so understanding the audiences that uh, differ between Facebook and LinkedIn, um, the best times to post, and also how to post strategically. So these are some of the kind of tools I'm going to be offering in uh, the social media marketing toolbox coming this Saturday. So it will be great. Yes, it will. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. All right, so Jennifer, how can people find you on social media? Um, I know you, you mentioned uh, LinkedIn and Facebook, but do you have any, any other areas where people can reach you, a uh, phone number, email, website? I do. Actually, I do have a, a great website that it has all my information, contact information on, and it is Friendly Finance Coach. Um, and there is a pro very professional picture done of me. I like to say that's my you know, daytime. I should have it on a t-shirt. <laughs> There's a very wonderful picture with my phone number and all my contact information on there too. Um, and also a link to just book an appointment with me. So anyone that, whether it's to talk about finance or you just want to know about you know, how, to get, how to get registered for Saturday's event, I can be found on FriendlyFinanceCoach.com. Fantastic. Jenna, uh, Jennifer, really appreciate um, everything that you shared with us tonight. And, and uh, again, looking forward to Saturday and beyond. Um, I hope that we can stay connected uh, with more collaborations coming 2021. Uh, do you have anything that you want to mention, anything upcoming in the new year that we should know about? Oh, there's always exciting things going on. Um, well, lots of things for the New Year's. I'm actually... Just this year during COVID, I, I wrote a book. So I'm developing that book into a course. So I'm you know, excited and hoping that's going to launch in the new year, new year. And then, of course, you know, just I'm looking forward to I'm not COVID being over because it's not going to go away, but I'm just I'm looking forward for, to people getting back to some sort of routine and you know, getting back to making money and getting back to you know, not feeling so doom and gloom. So I, I love discussing things with people and finding hope in whatever their situations are. So I'm excited that we're, I'll say, on the end of this year and looking for hope and, and more structures within, within 2021. Absolutely. I'm with you. Definitely <laughs> with you. Um, 
with with that uh, sentiment. So, Jennifer Woodbeck, thank you so much for your time. Uh, looking forward to Saturday. And yes, please reach out to uh, Jennifer on her social media platforms. Uh, she has pearls of wisdom to share with you. So um, you don't you don't want to not. Uh, take advantage of this uh, marvelous opportunity to get to know her. So you've been wa- listening to the Nikki Clark show uh, with our very special guest, Jennifer Woodback, and uh, we have tons more episodes on the website, NikkiClarkNetwork.com, if you're looking for your daily dose of inspiration. Jennifer, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Nikki. You're welcome. Stay strong, stay safe, and I'll see you Saturday. <laughs> 